Human beings are an ingenious group. Over our lives, we acquire skills, learn tricks of the trades, and find solutions to the problems we face. With our intelligence, we have built cities, constructed the wonders of the world, and even changed the face of our planet. From the Stone Age to the Modern Age, our intelligence has been our tool and the centre of our institutions, our societies, and our lives. Increasingly, we have outsourced these skills to technology without question. We are totally unaware of the algorithms that are controlling our lives, informing, analysing and steering everything from our shopping behaviours to world markets. We install countless apps which simplify our lives, agreeing to terms and conditions we don't understand and which could have far-reaching effects on our privacy. We want everything quickly and easily at the click of a button without fully understanding the moral and ethical implications for ourselves and society. Perhaps it's time to do something about it. Perhaps it's time for a moral code to protect us against destructive technologies and encourage ethical innovation. Not just today, but decades into the future, regardless of what incredible advances that brings. Every day, technology becomes smarter, and humans surrender our hard-won skills, thoughts and independence. We have come to rely on and trust the recommendations and answers technology gives us. We just keep clicking the buttons that give us more. Are we as a society aware that innovations are slowly taking our digital freedom away? In an incredible oversight of world governments, we currently have no legal protection for our human intelligence. We need to ask ourselves, is this what we want? Let's take a journey to explore how intelligent technologies are transforming our lives and the ethical challenges they pose to our society, our jobs, our future and our planet. We'll explore whether there is a better way which could reshape the world for the good of all, not just big technology firms. A way of thinking which is being kept from view for the benefit of a select few. The secret of our public intelligence. Did you know your intelligence is what makes you valued? Did you also know that any moment your intelligence could be completely digitalized, domesticated and colonized for commercial benefits. Public intelligence is your right to protect your skills, your ecosystems and your intelligence. It's your power to disagree from policies that breach your data security and privacy. It's your power to challenge the algorithms that fluctuate the prices of houses, holidays and stock market. It's your power to voice to these big brands who just outdate and update your product that you have just bought. It's your power to prevent robots from taking your jobs and skills. It challenges the purpose of driverless taxis, farmerless farming, teacherless teaching and dancing robots. Public intelligence is the way humans have evolved to survive in the world we have created for ourselves. The combined and shared knowledge of millennia of human society. Public intelligence is finding directions when we are lost. It shows us how and what to cook. It has taught us to garden and farm. It taught us to teach and to learn. Most importantly, it has allowed us to become valuable by specializing in certain tasks to earn a living. Public intelligence is our awareness of living in the world we have created with our knowledge and skills. But what happens when this collective intelligence is struck by a seismic change in society? For example, the Industrial Revolution. A lack of awareness of public intelligence and the value of our society and individual skills results in large-scale social and environmental disruption, which impacts us all. On the other hand, being aware of our public intelligence helps us prioritise people's and the planet's needs by embedding it at the heart of social change and the new technologies that we build around us. Sharon Matthew is a leading artificial intelligence expert, entrepreneur and activist. Since 2018, he has dedicated his work to asking questions about how technologies such as AI and future intelligent data systems could be made ethical for all by keeping our public intelligence at their core. I'm founder of largest AI community in the north of UK. My background is technology and engineering. 
I remember when I was building a robot to prevent war, uh, protect people and for surveillance purpose. I absolutely loved technology and I enjoyed two decades of working with corporate multinational technologies and companies and building innovative products using data analytics and artificial intelligence. A part of me felt sick because I felt these innovations were to micromanage people, replace underperforming managers and push harmful products. I felt most of these innovations were unaccountable. They were driven by profit and less by people. We assumed what we knew about people. In reality, we knew less about the big picture. We knew less about the ecosystem and we knew less about people and planet. I felt there is a need to create a framework that is all future driven so that we can have a secure, certain, happy, clean and sustainable planet for all of us. My mission is to empower everyone to create a sustainable future with accountable innovation. Sherin is not alone in his quest. There are many experts who fear that we are en route to social self-destruction at the hands of our own technology and need to address these issues right now with a proactive and democratic approach. These experts believe we are living in a dangerous cycle in which dominant firms and big brands are driving commercial innovations. It's a situation where the rich will become richer at society's expense. The cracks are already beginning to show with countless jobs being lost to automation, ever-increasing climate destruction in the pursuit of cheap technology and societal unrest across the world at the highest rates seen in decades. We have been here before. In the Industrial Revolution, machines took skilled jobs from small communities and centralised them in the mills and factories. In the Information Revolution, which began in the 1990s, computers, software and apps automated and disrupted many more jobs. We are now entering a new age of robotics, artificial intelligence, quantum computing and augmented technology an intelligence revolution. On the surface, this looks like a positive move for society. Software, algorithms and automation have created economic growth. AI has seen goods and services being conceived and brought to market more quickly, more cheaply and in higher quality. Information has created an entirely new digital economy. But how can we ensure the destructive side of the Industrial Revolution doesn't repeat itself in the Intelligence Revolution? How can jobs, people and the planet survive as these intelligent technologies take their place in society? How can we ensure new innovations are people-centric and sustainable? All of this begs the question, are we really ready for these advanced intelligent systems? And is current AI fully ready? for the real world. Humans are the top of the food chain. This is solely down to one almost unique capability, intelligence. By mastering a new skill or exploiting new information, we humans are consistently learning new ways to use the world around us to get what we need. Having information gives you an edge and intelligently using that information can mean the difference between life and death. And that's why mastering technologies such as AI is the new gold rush. So, starting at the beginning, what is intelligence? In basic terms, it is making informed decisions based on what's going on around us and our past experience. To put that in terms of data, we are constantly generating new intelligence from our old information. Our digital habits, browsing, clicking, buying and even scrolling, create huge amounts of useful references that algorithms can use to improve their own intelligence. They feed it back to us with a suggestion for something else to click or buy, our reaction is watched, and that in turn makes even more data about us which the app or service can use. This makes our actions from yesterday the information of today and the intelligence of tomorrow. By the nature of evolution, intelligence has become a highly evolving phenomenon. Humans learn quickly from our experience. We learn from our past, we apply in the present and shape a better future. This is how humans have always progressed. 
to improve every aspect of our life. Innovations like the wheel, ships, cars, planes, mathematics are all examples of human intelligence in action. We have progressed medicine, manufacturing, education and banking systems and overall improved our way of living. We have built an entire ecosystem around our intelligence. From Archimedes, Newton and Einstein, they have passed on their intelligence to benefit mankind. Almost all our innovations today are thanks to intelligent contributions that have been passed on, making innovation of one generation the tool for the next. People's intelligence are always meant to help the society. We are in the midst of the intelligence revolution. Just as human skills were distilled into machines in the industrial revolution, today our collective knowledge is being funneled and collected to be used by organizations for their own commercial benefit and to predict our own human behaviors. Just as humans exploited our intellectual advantage and harnessed and domesticated animals over thousands of years, in the same way, harnessing our information is resulting in what we call data domestication. Before intelligence revolution, we have seen industrial revolution, where we saw the power of manual labor being completely harnessed by machines. Machines powered by steam engines, fossil fuels, in the same way today with Industry 4.0, where we are seeing digital transformation, artificial intelligence, robotics, harnessing the power of intelligence. We saw the speed at which industrial revolution took in, but intelligence revolution is rapid because it's spreading at speed of digital transformation. Each and every one of us are digital users in one way or the other. So it has a global impact. Industrial revolution replaced mechanical repeated tasks. In the same way, intelligence revolution replaces intelligent logical tasks with automation, robotics and artificial intelligence. We knew with industrial revolution, most of the low earning jobs and manual workers, they got impacted by machines. Today, anyone who's doing something skilled and intelligent, low, medium or high earning jobs, all of us are impacted by artificial intelligence and advanced innovation. With industrial revolution, we also noticed that there was governance. So there were standards and labor laws and organizations to support labor rights. But this minute, there's nothing that protects intelligence. Hence the reason we need right for intelligence. Just as machine movements condensed and replaced human labor in the industrial revolution, and computers processed and replaced human experience in the information revolution, the intelligence revolution is driven by gathering and channeling the power of our human knowledge and experience. Whoever has access to information and intelligence has a clear advantage over the competition. So what is intellectual colonization? Let's go back into this pre-industrialization era where farmers are employing farms with animals and carrying out repeated tasks. With industrialization, these animals got replaced by machines. And with modernization, they could earn as much as they like with these machines. Okay, they could own more, they could earn more. Over the decades, we introduced digitalization, which made our lives technology and data rich. With information error, we were able to pinpoint exactly when, what, and how to make these decisions. All these actions around our behavior, our logic, decision-making, our thinking patterns constitutes to our intelligence. Our intuition, our thought leadership allows us to propose key decisions. This ability is our human intelligence. Just as we have witnessed in human colonization and deprivation of human rights, in my opinion, we are going to face a similar intellectual colonization where our intelligence is exploited and the rights owned by somebody else. It's like an imposter quietly stealing your job. This creates a very big problem when it comes to digital technology, because if the amazingly smart content that is each and every one of us gets digitized, our hard work, our learned skills, and our expertise can just be copied and pasted. It is at this point that we risk losing our real world intelligence and work value to the digital realm. The problem is this is not visible in the digital world. Without realizing we're actually building a digital monopoly for someone. Let's go back 40, 50 years ago 
where we saw accountants and clerks working on paper using the skills, maths, going through papers and numbers and doing say tax processing. 10-15 years ago, same thing could be done by few accountants using software. So 1000 accountants job could be done by just 10 accountants. But in few years, all of this could be completely digitalized even further. AI and robotic processes are fully capable of understanding what to do next once they know the pattern and the logic. So many you give your logic away is digitalized and impacts everyone. And there comes trends such as managerless management thanks to AI, teacherless teaching thanks to augmented reality and virtual reality, builderless building could become a possibility thanks to 3D printing and robotics. You're already seeing driverless cars. We know companies are trying to launch driverless taxis. Technically speaking, they don't own taxis. They don't own drivers. They subscribe to taxi drivers' skills. Intellectually speaking, you can only drive one car at a given time. So extreme digitalization can allow companies to run thousands of cars without drivers. Nursing and curating people's skills and intelligence and building an intelligent application without the need of humans. And when repeated on a mass scale, it impacts every taxi driver across the world. This is a prime example of intellectual colonization, a digital robbery of intelligence and hard-earned skills. And it's already widespread. We are seeing AI and automation taking over jobs such as warehousing, delivery, driving and manufacturing. So who could be next? With increasing demand putting strain on human teachers and a set curriculum of necessary information to be taught repeatedly, could automated holographic teachers really deliver lessons? And if so, should they? Children need to build up trust from an early age up until university. And you can't do that with any program or artificial intelligence. You need human interaction. How far is automation likely to go? We asked car bodywork specialist Janori Stapleton what he thinks about what's happening. When I do a job, I do it, it comes from the heart. I see a customer, when I have a conversation, it comes from the heart. And I can see that all going. Because from the time you make artificial intelligence smarter and smarter, it gets to a point where you don't know any feeling, don't have no morals, no principles, and just keep them doing what it thinks is doing right. But in actual fact, it's, it's getting rid of humans. And that's where the problem is going to start. The healthcare sector is experiencing a proliferation of advanced technology and AI. So we asked the same question to an expert radiologist, Iti Niaz. Machines are able to do a lot of what we do day to day. So if they're able to make the decisions of what radiographic exposure I need to give this patient. So we're not giving too much, we're not giving too little. We're just giving the right amount to get the diagnosis, to get a good radiograph, a good image. Machines are doing this now. They're able to work out what is the best exposure to give for that patient. The technologies have become so advanced, we don't need to think about it on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it's something you still need to know how to do, just in case something goes wrong. Now imagine you drive a car, you know how to drive a manual car, but now let's say for years you've driven an automatic. If something went wrong and you have to go back into a manual car, you still need to know how to drive the manual car and choose which gear is right for the appropriate speed. Same with radiography. So you have to choose which radiation levels are appropriate for that patient. But with technologies advancing, that skill is getting less and less. Or as a, as a profession, we're becoming more de-skilled. Anna is an AI ethics and policy expert and founder of an international AI governance community. The technologies that actually we are using that um, are coming already, it's kind of causing the shift of power. Uh, the companies uh, that are having these technologies and the data, they are already possessing the immense power. And in, in a power play, then if one entity has large power, then there has to be some uh, kind of control mechanism or the system. In that sense, if we're talking about democratic societies and if we're talking about the technologies to be good and empowering for, for the larger society, then definitely the public should have the voice. Hidden truth of intellectual revolution. We will witness 40% of the job losses due to introduction of AI, robotics over the next decade. 
but this technology will also contribute $15 trillion to our global economy. The question we have to ask ourselves is, at what risk? We need to understand that technology evolves incredibly quickly, faster than the time it takes to completely train new users of that system. Studies suggest that 70% of students currently in the education system will not understand the technology they are working with once they graduate. But that's not all. Historically, the introduction of technology impacts job security. Combined, this means our human society is going to suffer displacements of all kinds, from our financial security to our health and well-being. Even those not directly affected may find themselves exploited for their intelligence. For example, you may be the individual that helps translate your skills or your intelligence so that technology can learn and replicate faster than a human. In my opinion, we are about to witness intellectual revolution. AI and robotics, like any other major innovation, has a direct and profound impact on society. We often overlook the long-term effects and risks associated with new innovations in the same way that we now face a crisis with plastic pollution. As plastics took over the world, no one thought about how to effectively get rid of them, creating a worldwide environmental catastrophe that we, our children, and our grandchildren will be struggling to control for decades or even centuries. Artificial intelligence is where regulators are playing catch-up with its AI development. 66% of the people believe that governance that we have today is not enough and they fear AI and robotics. The current industry is still figuring out how AI works. 75% of the organization are missing AI leadership and strategies and AI industry is still maturing. 80% of the technology leaders believe that intelligence system should have been regulated. In my opinion, let people ask simple questions because leaving the decisions of the future entirely in the hands of few unregulated has its own consequences. So now is the time to take control of the future and take a proactive stand. Abigail Holt is a barrister and leading member of the European Circuit of the Bar and the UK Association of Women Judges. Of artificial intelligence, it may well be at the moment that there potentially would be significant pushback and this whole field seems to be somewhat unregulated at the moment but that doesn't mean that that situation will necessarily last. There will have to be some form of, of campaign process which ultimately results in the drafting of legislation which is put before Parliament and which is debated and amended and, and voted upon. If you're going to regulate um, artificial intelligence professionals, you then have to talk about the structure of a profession and what standards a professional has to meet and whether there are exams to be passed and, and what training they have to have in the ethical ingredients of the, of the profession. Your intelligence is your human right. So how can we create a democratic initiative to demand digital freedom and claim our right to protect our intelligence? The first and most important principle is a human right that does not currently exist and which could be the secret to many of the ethical problems we face today. The right to intelligence. The concept of the human right to intelligence is about protecting the intellectual capabilities that make us who we are. Our skills, our knowledge, our interactions, our experiences, and the worlds we create for ourselves. If we do nothing, AI could impact every profession as we know it, from our teachers, lawyers and doctors, to our taxi drivers. Some of these jobs could be impacted positively, but some could suffer a catastrophic blow. Unless intelligence systems are regulated and designed with involvement of public, in my opinion, loss of our intelligence could be a global threat. I feel very strongly that as a lawyer, it's important to work towards legal norms that apply across boundaries and where we can be confident that our neighbouring countries 
and also countries at the other side of the world work on the basis of the same sorts of principles, whether it's human rights, the right to life, the right not to be tortured or subject to inhumane and degrading treatment, the right to a fair trial. Um, equally, in terms of rights not to be um, victimised and have one's life turned upside down by rapid, uncontrolled um, evolutions in artificial intelligence. It is key to better understand the technology itself from where the problem might arise, whether it's data, data cleaning process, or uh, whether it's algorithm building process itself, for example. If you're a policymaker, then you also need a better awareness um, actually on the both, both sides again to um, understand the state of the art of, te of, of the technologies and state of the art um, of ethical frameworks or tools or risk assessments and measurements or metrics. In a world of new advancements such as artificial intelligence, robotics and augmented reality, how are we going to respect people as the heart of society and the economy? Perhaps we need a people-centric, purpose-driven principle to ensure innovations maximise rather than minimise human potential. Humanless innovations are trending, but regulations have a long way to go to catch up with these new advancements. So what are the consequences of this technological Wild West, and who is accountable for it? Recently, a large travel agency went bust, and literally the very next day, the algorithms of competing brand increased the flight prices by four to five times. It was tracking your internet cookies. Some innovations are designed to squeeze more and more out of you without even you realizing it. If it's possible with technology, that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. What's the benefit of these technologies to society? Of algorithms that predict our next moves? Of software to replace parts or all of our skills? Of holographic or deepfake artificial intelligence that can impersonate anyone from newsreaders to teachers or even you? For example, in 2020, a study showed that an AI outperformed doctors diagnosing breast cancer. An international team led by Google Health and Imperial College designed and trained a computer model on X-ray images from nearly 29,000 women which have been diagnosed. This is actually a really good example of the positive use of AI, where the system supports the decision making of the human. This labelling was done by human consultants. The data sets were labelled before the deep learning algorithm could be applied. The question is, who owns the model? Is it the consultants? Years ago, those tools I have don't made, don't around, but you make your job easier. So an artificial intelligence to me, I would like to use it as a tool, not a replacement. So in healthcare, artificial intelligence is really coming in and progressing the profession, not only in radiography, in the x-ray world, but all over healthcare. And we're able to diagnose pathologies quicker and easier by noticing patterns and, and seeing much more detail with scans. So this is a really good thing that artificial intelligence or even just computers in general are, are bringing to this profession. How do I see AI being beneficial for the teacher? Through tracking of data. That's what takes up most of the teaching teacher's time. The teacher will know what the next steps to take. I can also see it from a pupil's point of view if you're a visual learner. Humanity is on a constant drive for innovation at any cost. Take the phone in your pocket. Manufacturers work on a constant release cycle of new designs, sizes and cameras, all of which are intentionally outdated by new phones every couple of years. But the planet is being made to sustain this never-ending cycle of incrementally improved products and planned obsolescence. And the environmental cost is vast. Since 2010, the volume of electronic waste generated globally has been steadily rising. In 2019, approximately 53.6 million metric tonnes of technological waste was produced. All this new technology has a financial cost as well. Global debt increased by 40% as the e-commerce boom took off and internet and mobile became more readily available. Could the solution be something called disruption prevention? 
We have to think how new innovation should be designed to adapt to people and ecosystem around us instead of disrupting them. The displacement of jobs like doctors or engineers could be done by robotic precision. This disruption impacts schools, colleges, textbooks, authors, lecturers, exam boards, certification process. All of these are used for building doctors and engineers of tomorrow. Displacement and replacement like this could cause a profound chain reaction. If advanced technologies came in to replace me and my job, I've worked in this profession for 10 years, and if it was to come and take that away, I'd be a bit lost, I'd, to be honest. I'd feel like I'd have to start a scratch from brand new. I wouldn't really know what direction to go in. One of the first industries to feel mass automation was car manufacturing. From the first production lines created by Henry Ford, today large parts of the industry are fully automated. Genor is bucking the trend as a bodywork specialist firm who manually mend and transform classic cars. We've got to look at the long-term effects, which is what it's all about. I do feel for my next generation, the generations after that. So I need to have a close look at what's going to go on in the future, I think, because it's it kind of can be kind of scary and it defeats the whole point of being human. It's quite worrying to be fair. 40% is not a small number. In healthcare, we're really based upon the empathy and the emotions. We connect with our patients and deliver better care through that empathy. If something was to come in to automate our careers and our jobs, it'd be a real tragedy for healthcare in general. We carry out risk assessments for everything that we do these days. So why don't we expect the same for innovations that are used by the public? Sherin believes the people behind every innovation should risk evaluate the impact on society or industry will enter, and that failing to do so has dangerous consequences. Stock markets were crashing and there were anomalies because of algorithms trading behind the scene. There's about 60 to 70% of the stock market trading controlled by algorithms. You also know credit scoring, your loan approval, also dictated by algorithm. There are big brands that are automating warehouses without considering the people. CCTV and digital tags are being used to monitor how much workers are working and how long they're taking for toilet breaks. Activists believe we need to ask a number of questions about the dangers of emerging technology and its potential to harm people and human rights, to disrupt the social economic balance, to foster racism and bias, a lack of inclusivity and fairness, to damage our health and emotional well-being, to harm our society and security, to be unsustainable in terms of resource use and give one body an unfair advantage due to the intelligence they have harvested. AI should be used to benefit society and to provide solutions to very unique problems. But at the same time, any of these solutions must do align to an ethical charter. Across the globe, there are many organisations, countries and governments who are defining their own ethical charters. But currently, there is a lack of legislation. The charters, though, are a really positive step forward and they have a number of key things. For example, AI should not be used to harm or kill any humans and also respect human rights. AI should be fair, unbiased and transparent in the decision-making process. Public intelligence ensures a full risk assessment is carried out to ensure innovations are designed for safe, ethical and inclusive adoption. The risks are managed by the designer and the user equally. In the age of intelligence revolution, Harnessing and replicating our skills and behaviour is power. So what do you do when you have the power of intelligence at your fingertips? So what is accountability? It's the moral code of designing technology. In the real world, we wouldn't judge or discriminate people on the street. We wouldn't steal someone's livelihood or jeopardise anyone's future. We wouldn't build something that would fall apart. We wouldn't damage nature. So why should we act this way in the digital world? So why are we unfair? Why do we steal public data and exploit intelligence when online? Encourage responsible developer, but also responsible user. 
because as a user you also have to increase your awareness uh, what kind of technologies you are actually using it's better to have an idea how your data is collected how then it is fed to the algorithm and then the decision how it is generated uh, it is the problem is actually much wider and much broader it's about the uh, specific harm or caused by the technology and so far uh, the users are not empowered um, with with the tools or rights uh, to actually talk about the harm when it is um, caused accountability is to acknowledge the repercussions and unintentional consequences that will contribute towards the global crisis and risk that we are facing now i know what i give you can't buy you can't make you can't reproduce it is, you've either got it or you haven't got it. And that's the top and bottom of that, as far as I'm concerned. They might try to give it artificial morals, artificial principles, but it's the word artificial that makes the big difference. Morals, principles, only applies to human beings. And if you take the human, that out of the equation, it's, it's, it's nothing. It is very important to think about risk or impact whether it's good or bad. If you have thought about the good impact, maybe you could make it better before the deployment of the product. So it's, it's very important to think about the impact or influence of the technology policies to broader users or society or economics, to address it proactively rather than after 10 years probably. So it's always better to address in advance proactively. There was a draft AI auditing framework the idea is that if we have an AI system, how do we audit it? Who is responsible and how can we monitor compliance? In January 2021, the UK AI Council published a roadmap, emphasising again the need for trust in AI. They say that trust cannot actually be achieved until everyone in society has full confidence in the actual technology, its governance and regulation. What is important is that the risk of existing and new applications of AI needs to be evaluated. We cannot wait for regulation and legislation. Businesses should start evaluating their AI now and make sure that they include the citizen voice when doing so. And if too much artificial intelligence comes and takes over that, gets all the jobs, takes all the jobs, replaces your job, replaces people in the, in the factories or wherever, you have to think about that long-term long -term effects. I don't think people are thinking like that, unfortunately. Machines should assist us in doing our roles. They should help us to diagnose. They should make systems quicker, help us to reduce waiting times for patients, make their waiting experience quicker. AI should be used in context, understood by all, and explanations of decisions made by AI should be understandable by everyone, all stakeholders, most importantly, the general public, regardless of their educational attainment. I would want a say, I would want to vote, if it came to that, how the future of teaching would go. Yes, I support public intelligence, yeah. If it seems obvious that changes and developments in artificial intelligence are affecting the, the texture of our everyday life, can something be done about it to regulate artificial intelligence? I would say yes. I would say that it's a very large project, but that it's eminently possible. You just have to make it happen. Do you feel secure in your job? Do you feel your family and future generations will make a healthy living? Do you feel our planet is on the verge of a climate crisis? Do you believe there is a lack of privacy and an abundance of fake news? Are we losing our intelligence to innovation? If the answer is yes, if you believe our ecosystem, our human intelligence and our intuition still has a place in society, the time has come to act. The votes and voices of the public will encourage regulators and innovators to reconsider, rethink and redesign new and emerging technologies. We are not alone. While the idea of public intelligence was maturing, the European Union announced that it was developing a set of regulations for AI to manage risk in new technologies and to keep humans in the loop, thereby supporting the need for change and immediate action. The battle to bring digital equality, sustainability 
and accountability to technology is just beginning and your vote and support for the Public Intelligence Initiative will determine our future. Please visit our website, publicintelligence.org, to vote and show your support to continue our message. Technology has been deeply embedded in our lives and in our economy. It offers great opportunity and value to people and the planet if utilized correctly. The big concern that many people have today is, are these innovations accountable to people and to the planet? Stop tolerating and be the change by casting your vote because right now it's already happening and we are oblivious to it. We cannot afford disruption after disruption. We cannot afford loss of our intelligence. It's time to realize it's billions of people against one wrong innovation. Let's be the change. Let's stand together and unite as a single force. Let's introduce accountability in innovations to safeguard our jobs and build a sustainable world. Public intelligence is a democratic initiative to claim your right to intelligence and demand accountability. Your intelligence is your human right. Public intelligence is about bringing this awareness. So let your friends and colleagues know. Let those schools and colleges know. Let everyone who's working hard in this society know about this. Let's build a global momentum with your votes. There has never been a time like this where our society needs to stand up together. We need to take action to protect our jobs, our planet and our future. This is our only hope. And when we take action, we have a better future for all of us.